Okay, this is Spider Tank 3, part 10. Very much the thin edge of the wedge. There's only a couple of spiders left inside the Spidey Tank. It's getting trickier to see the spiders because there's so few. I'll turn the time lapse off. I'll turn some of the lights on and we might get a better color balance. That's today's date. That's a fairly important date for the Spider Tank. You know why? It marks the three month point of Spider Tank 3. It's a tad old fashioned doing it like that, but it saves me mucking around with titles. Let me move the time lapse camera away and the strange light that gives off a very strange color. For me, it's been a very interesting spider tank to do a very different one. Um, for the fact we've been dealing with spiderlings along the way, I'll take the lid off and we'll take a look inside. One of the first things I do is I'll just get rid of any web that has been put up on the glass here. Mind you, it hasn't been too bad in this spider tank. There hasn't been too much activity in this top zone at all, which sort of surprised me. Every little black dot you see in there, be it hanging in web or down on the ground, well, unfortunately that's a dead spider. It could be a black house spiderling because we had those in here. But most of them are red back spiderlings who obviously didn't get up to this phase of this spider tank. To see the few larger spiders left behind, I will use the boroscope and we'll look down through the screen. Okay, I've got the boroscope looking at the first spidey. The beep has been removed from this video and as always this video is highly educational beep 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 okay this is the largest spider in spider tank 3 after three months and surprise surprise it's a male redback spider you can see like little pom-poms on the front of this spider uh, if you think back to what these spiders were like when they were spiderlings they were tiny through the boroscope this spider is now presenting and filling up the whole screen that the boroscope captures. I'll be honest here, I never thought a male would get up to this point. I learned a lot about the way the males operate when watching this Spider Tank 3 evolve over the months. You're probably saying it doesn't move very much. Well, let me just play with the web here. And hopefully we'll see this male redback come to life. Oh, come on, do something for me. Okay, it's on the move, sort of, a little bit sluggish. And there's another view of this male redback, just showing you the different shape that they've got on the back as well, whatever the back bit's called, I'm not a spider expert, I'll try and give this boy a razz up again, I'm just going to tickle the web. Come on, do something. The boys are, are very interesting and they're different to the girls in the way they play. Obviously he doesn't want to play with me right at the moment, and there's a lot of web in there as well. Come on, play with me, play! Okay, I'll let you be. I don't think anyone in the comments area ever predicted a male would get to this point. At this stage of the spider's development, they're acting like individual spiders with their own zones. They're no longer acting like spiderlings. The male was always hanging out in the middle there. Very easy to find, always in the middle. The little girl I'm going to try and look at next, she always had this area here, and she liked to hang out above where the water is here. There's that other female over not too far away from the male. There's also another female hanging out in this top ring area here. She's very reclusive. There are other smaller spiderlings in here. I honestly think they don't stand a chance up against the other established spiders who've got their own zones in Spider Tank 3. I'm just going to poke an area here where I call them the cannon fodder spiderlings are. You can see them moving. Okay, yeah, I don't think they'd last too much longer in here. Okay, this female redback spider has done extremely well to get to this point. We're looking at the spider front on at the moment, so we're not really getting a gauge of how large its leg span is. It's done extremely well. I've watched this spider working above the water area of Spider Tank 3, and it is just taken out spidling after spidling to survive to this point. Quite amazing. Now that I've got her to move, you can start to see her leg span. You can start to see the very distinctive features of an adult female redback spider. She no longer looks like the spiderling from all those months ago. It's a beautiful thing to see. I'll come along and give her a bit of a tease to see how she plays. Come on, let's see what she does here. Any back leg action or anything spiderific? Ooh, so I reckon she's primed to strike. Okay, this is a female redback spider. This one's smaller than the previous female we looked at. The leg span isn't 
filling out the boroscope screen here. We are looking at the spider fairly flat on from the bottom. She's done very well to get to this point in the spider tank. Uh, the fact that she's down near the male is sort of curious. I don't know what they've been up to. But I think there's one more larger spider to take a look at which resides up near the top ring and that's the next one we'll take a careful look at. What I should do is before we see the next spider is see how this one goes if I just raz her up a little bit. See how she reacts to the probe I've got going in there. Whoa, oh, she's going straight for it actually. Scary. Okay, this is a female redback spider which is living under the ring of Spider Tank 3. I think it's important to show you that this spider has its own zone, different to the other spiders in the tank. It looks like she's just had a feed. I'm just looking at the back of her there. It looks quite bulbous. It's difficult to know whether she's as big as the first female we looked at, but I believe the male is the largest in leg span in Spider Tank 3. Okay, so we've got these three larger girls that have got their zones, and we've got this quite large male as well. Like with the other red backs in the tank, I'm just going to raz up this girl a bit, see how she reacts to the little probe I've got on my hand, and I'm getting close. Oh, back leg action. Yeah, she. this one might be the, the most dangerous in here. Yeah, look at that. She's actually turning around, and she's, she's actually coming for the probe. I'm actually right next to the uh, boroscope here. She's a scary one. Okay, Now I'm looking at her size. I still say she's about the size of the first female we looked at. I'm just going to put the, the probe in a bit further. You can see the probe now. Wow, she is a spiky one, I tell you. That girl there. Don't mess with her. She will have you for breakfast, lunch and dinner all at the same time. Yeah, she's... Whoa, she is... That's why, that's why she's here at this point. Okay, it's a great example of why she has made it to this point. She's doing all the things that a survivor redback spider would do. Look at her go there. She's fantastic. And this is um, classic sort of adult redback spider action. We've seen it over and over and I can't stop looking at it. Look at her go there. She thinks she's got something to eat, but she's actually got nothing to eat. It's just my my probe there, but she's doing a fantastic show for us. I should pay her more money, shouldn't I? But I think all she'd give me is a bite. Look at her go. Beautiful. I love it. I can't stop watching it. Mm. I can't help but think, what would have I done if I didn't have this boroscope to look at the spiders in Spider Tank 3? It's been a fantastic asset to see things that are stupidly small and incredibly difficult to video. Okay, well, let me just pull out the boroscope here. I've got like a little way of keeping this proboscis camera at a certain height using the magic arm or Manfrotto arm or friction arm as some people call it. But uh, I've got a plan for Spider Tank to continue on in a slightly different way. I noticed the spiders have now got very established webby networks as well, like the adult spiders do. They're certainly not spiderlings anymore. But one of my biggest fears is I'm worried I'm going to come down here one day and basically everything's going to be dead. A little bit like whatever happened on this side of the spider tank when a whole bunch of spiders just passed away and I've never worked out why. So from this point here, we're going to change spider tank 3 up into a far more positive zone. I would hate the hunger pains to be kicking in, so I'm going to introduce one luscious cricket. Okay, I very carefully prepared here one skewered cricket. That's going to be a wonderful meal for a redback spidey. And I'm going to introduce this delicacy into the spider tank amongst the web network. Oh yeah, let's see who reacts to this stunning meal. Well, what the cricket needs to do is not move because every movement sends messages to the red backs in the spider tank. Every move is going to get us a step closer. Now I better give the game away. There's actually a number of spiders coming towards the cricket. As it moves, the, the first spider that came across was the male. But the male has just stayed below the cricket and has, hasn't made a decisive strike. Maybe that's saying much about the male redback. So there's the male there, just playing a strange sort of standoff game. But there is the female that resides above the water trough, who is 
most likely going to come in and strike. And now we've got the male down the bottom there, redback spider, and the one of the larger females just hovering to the rear of the cricket. Okay, we've had one of the spiders. Now I think that's the one from the water trap area has run up. There's also the male there as well. And I think they're just a bit curious about what's going on. There's probably a, a massive scare. There's something other than brother or sister to have for dinner. It's been crazy. The larger females have been chasing away the smaller spiderlings that are coming in and trying to get near the cricket. But uh, look who's still near the cricket. In fact, just above it, it's the male redback spider. Okay, it looks like a small spiderling. I'm thinking it's female has come up very quickly from the base of the tank and it's doing a little red back spider things in a very small and cute way. The other, like I said, the other bigger females have just been chasing off basically what's at the cricket at the moment, which is the smaller spiderlings. They were very defensive of the cricket, yet they didn't want to come in for a decisive strike like we're seeing now from that. Oh yes, that would have been a spider bite from that very small Spiderling, and it's coming up for some more. It's the way they work. And that small spiderling is again at the legs. And if you see a lot of twitching going on, well, I would dare say that's spider bites. And it's the spider bites that uh, inject the venom. And then the whole knock-on effect of that is it breaks down the cricket, so then the spider's got a lovely cricket milkshake to drink. And maybe take careful note our male Redback spider has been curious, but always standoffish. There's a slightly different perspective. Just to the side a bit of what's going on. That very small spiderling is doing what these spiders are wired to do. Yes, okay, there goes the smaller spiderling going up near the male there. And I might put a time lapse on this, and maybe that's going to reveal some interaction between the spiders as they... Uh, all get quite aware that there's something a little bit different to nibble on. Whoa, okay. Wow, did you see that? That male. Probably because I wouldn't be deal I wouldn't be playing with that little female little boy. Or well, he's actually a big boy. Because I've just seen what you did to the cricket. I don't think she's gonna be very nice to you. They're having a bit of a standoff at the at the back of the skewer there. Oh, oh, oh. I hope we're not going to see any monkey business. <sighs> what is going to happen there? Yes, I think dangling the cricket here on the skewer, we're going to see some very strange, spiderific things happen. Yeah. Of course, the male wants to eat. You always got to remember that as well. And it was the male that raced over immediately once this cricket went in. It was the one to react the most. But it looks like that girl is going to pick a fight with that boy. I don't think it's going to end well for the boy if that happens. I have to be uh, zooming in on this. All the ooh. We're meant to be looking at the cricket now. We've got a, a male and female having a, a stitch up here. Moving down crocus, I'm hoping it's a female. It is very small. When, ooh, when they're that small... And very hard to tell boy from girl. Okay, well, that spider is coming down for more. They just want to fight it out. They don't want to play a common sense game here by the looks of it. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. I, I, don't think it, I don't think it's going to end in a very nice way. And no, it hasn't ended in a very nice way. Oh, crikey, I thank goodness I got that on camera. There we go, the male has cleaned up that other spider, and that was a spider that came along and had a go at the cricket. Once I look at this on the computer, I'll be able to verify, hopefully, or maybe you can, whether that was a small male or female. I, I think it was a female. But now it's something for dinner. That was just crazy, but that's what I've seen in the spider tank over and over and over. It's just... When it snaps in here, it's manic, and it's it's exciting to watch. Most times it's been caught on time-lapse, and this has been caught in real time. Man, these things are maniac, these spiders. I uh, don't trust them. They'll do anything they can to uh, step on you. 
Meanwhile, there's a cricket there which has had a couple of spider bites. Just feeling the pain while that other ferocious little spider fight was going on. And now what is very interesting, and I've never seen this before, that was the male, that's that big male, going down and doing like red back spider things that we've seen so many times from the females, but rarely ever from a male. And remember, this male was extremely standoffish. It didn't want to come in and do the decisive red back spider bite thing. And it's doing all the, the things you see the females do. I think it's the first time I've actually videoed anything like this. It's it's quite astonishing to watch. I'm just trying to get different angles of it. It's going up and down and doing web work. It'll probably come back down in a second. Yep, there we go. Doing things exactly like you'd see from a female redback spider. Very interesting to witness. But really, it's a fantastic insight into why this male spider is one of the largest in the tank. Uh, we can see the way it's wired. It's amazing. Okay, this is very interesting now. Oh, see that? There's a female. That's one of the bigger females has come in chasing the male in. Yes, this is going to be a very interesting thing to watch what happens here. I think we're going to get some real insights of the way these spiders operate against each other. Especially when there's just one nice meal to be had. Well, I think that's the male feeding or trying to feed. I don't think it's doing spider bites. I think it's in the feeding mode. Yes, okay. Well, I think from here on, I'll just finish up here and I'll get a time lapse on this and we can have a good study of what goes on in uh, this tank here over a lengthy period of time that this cricket on the skewer is going to present as a meal to the spiders in the tank. I think it's going to be a little bit crazy. Well, I think from here on we're not going to look at those male redback spiders the same way, are we? Let me get the lid on and let me set up the time lapse. Okay, I'm on to the time-lapse footage now, and a time-lapse camera will compress and accelerate the time that we're seeing in the spider tank. That biggest male redback spider in the tank continues to feed on the cricket, and you'll watch it gorge itself now, and you'll see the back end of it start to expand and pulsate as it eats. I've seen this often on the female redback spiders, but I don't think I've ever seen it before, like I'm seeing here on this male redback spider that's feeding on the cricket. Eventually other spiders in the spider tank start to come down to the cricket and what's good about this cricket is it gives me a focus point to see exactly what's in the spider tank. As it stands at this point now, the spiders are so scattered in the tank it's sometimes really difficult to understand how many are in there. I've said it before in this episode, I believe the smaller spiderlings in the tank from this point on will just become cannon fodder for the more established redback spiders in the tank. Now, sure, we've got the focus on the cricket there and the other spiders are starting to come down and feed. Now, what's really, really strange is that first spider that got attacked by the main male redback spider, and that's the spider just above the cricket. I'll put a circle around it. That spider seems to be coming back to life and seems to be shaking off whatever venom effect it had been given by the male redback spider. From what I can see, it's got a leg that's stuck in the web. My belief is if it could free its leg, it could scamper away and possibly live for another day. But it's moving and shaking and trying to free its leg. Well, it just becomes a meal for what looks like other spiders in the tank. And remember, that little female redback spider was taken out by the largest male redback in the tank. Just thinking about the lifespan of a male redback spider, it's not very long. If they're lucky, they live to six to seven months old. Remember, the tank is three months old and possibly that largest male would be from some of the first egg sacs that opened up in the spider tank to get to this size within a three month period. With the cricket in here giving the spiders in the spider tank the best meal they've had in three months, it reveals one by one exactly who's living in the spider tank at this point. I don't think I see any black house spiders. Maybe you'll see something that I've missed. But there are other males within the tank here. They're quite difficult to see when they're younger. It's only when they get to that last phase 
of their growth, you can start to really see they are a male redback spider. They've got those two baubles at the front of them. It's quite distinctive. They've also got a slightly different shape at the back and they've got different colorings as well. And the other thing about the male redbacks is you won't see it get much bigger than the biggest one that you see in the tank at the moment. And on the scale of spiders, they are a very small spider. When you go near a redback's nest, they're often around, but they're on the edge of the nest and they will often take off and scamper away in fright almost versus the female, which will stay within its nest. Maybe the best word I can use to describe the male redbacks is they're quite a skittish style of spider. And I suppose when your fate is going to be the female eating you after you've had a little kissy poo, well, that's going to make anybody skittish. And it's sort of nice to have a focus point on the male redback spider. The other spider tanks were very female centric. Lots of female redback spiders. I think spider tank 2 may have had a male in there for a little bit. They don't last long around the females I've noticed. But spider tank 3 seems to be evolving in a totally different way versus spider tank 1 and 2. Although spider tank 3 has a totally different way the spiders feed versus the previous spider tanks. The largest male redback spider did the majority of the feeding from the cricket and in real time the feeding went on for about 12 hours and after that point nothing else really came back to the cricket. It just sat there and shriveled up over the days. I kept the camera on it and it was a total waste of time. Nothing came back to the cricket once that initial feeding had finished. I put the camera on the area where the largest male redback spider lives in the tank. It's on one of the legs going up to the top rings. It's like a miniaturized version of what the female redbacks do when they make a home. It's like a cone of web and the male will spend a fair bit of time adding networks of web around this little home that he's made. It's a fairly ramshackle design, but that's normal for redback spiders. And it's sort of semi-curious to see this done by a male. It's something that I would normally not find when I look out in the garden. You'll find the female nests and the way they set up pretty easily. But this is the first time I've really seen what a male does to set up a home. It's basically the same as a female redback spider, but it's on a much smaller scale. I always had a thought that the males were very dependent on what the females got up to, as in the females would do a lot of the web work, the females would capture a lot of the food, and the males sort of just hung around waiting for an opportunity to come in and have second bite in a sense, and didn't really have to go through the, the risk of capturing something to feed, because sometimes when a spider captures something, it can be up against something that can just spin the whole thing around and then the next thing the spider becomes the meal. That's what goes on in nature. It's fairly nasty business. But seeing a male redback spider have a lot of independence and being very dominant within the spider tank, that's been an eye-opener for me. I never thought I would see this style of activity from a male redback spider. And I know the argument point against what I'm showing here is, well, Leo, you're showing something which is an artificial environment. It doesn't happen like this out in nature. And yes, I would agree with you on that. I can't disagree on that sort of thought. But I'll tell you what, to get the footage of what I'm seeing here would be very difficult for me to go out in the garden and say, hey, look at this. I found a male redback spider nest that's like a little miniature version of what the girls do. In fact, I think it would be near impossible to find out in the garden when I'm looking at redbacks. One of the other redback spiderlings, which we may have looked at near the start of the video, it's the one that lives near the grill at the back of the spider tank. It's also got its home just above where the water is within the spider tank. She's very clever because when something comes and gets a drink from the water in the spider tank, well, she can come down and pick it off as an easy meal. And it gets back to that thought that the few established redbacks in this spider tank, and they're still very small, are picking off the smaller spiderlings within the tank. But remember, at this point of the spider tank, the number of the smaller spiderlings is becoming a very finite number. It'll get to a point where your next meal is going to have to be one of those other established spiders within the spider tank. Hmm, now which one would you avoid? I know which one I wouldn't go near. This is a wider shot of the bottom part of the spider tank. All those little dots in the spider tank are dead spiderlings. Did we see any black house spiders in this episode? I don't think I saw any personally, but I'm going to put a box here within frame and that larger male redback spider 
has dominance over a fair bit of this tank in the way he's setting up his webs. And even though in this episode we witnessed that larger male redback spider gorge itself on the cricket, it became much bigger once it had a giant feed, I'm pretty sure this spider is going to continue on feeding even though redback spiders can get by without feeding for periods of time which are fairly lengthy. That's one of their little tricks that they do to get through hard times. There's another redback that's set up. It's almost in the middle of the spider tank. It's down quite low and it's got its little zone there and the way it's set up its webby network. And you get that sense that there's only a small number of dominant spiders within the spider tank. But maybe we're going to go back and look at the cricket being fed on again by the spiders in the tank. And I'm going to slow the footage up. And in that initial stage when other spiders came down to feed, I think it's really important to take a look at these spiderlings and try to work out whether they're male or female. I know some people may struggle with the idea I put a cricket into the spider tank to make a focus point for feeding. But as it stands in the spider tank, there are so few spiders to look at. It's almost like you could shoot a shotgun in there and not hit any spiders. They're scattered in the spider tank. And if you think about trying to make a video and focus on what's going on, it's actually very hard. Earlier in the spider tank series, when there were lots of spiders to look at, I could almost put a camera, set it up in a certain area, and something magical would happen in front of camera. At the moment, it's very hard to pull that off. Any action that happens within the spider tank is fairly radical and it doesn't really happen in places where I think it's going to happen. But putting the cricket in the spider tank I think brought out some spiders from the woodwork that were literally hiding within the tank and are very tricky to find. You might think that really any of the larger spiderlings within the tank at this time well they're basically winners to get to this point. They've proven that they are psycho spiders to get to this point and when I got to this stage of the spider tank, I thought to myself, well, hang on, there is going to be a point where there's only two spiders left in the tank. How am I going to be able to capture the final battle within spider tank three, where one spider will take out that second last spider? And of course, the spider that does that becomes the winner of spider tank three. So yes, from this point on, the challenge for me was to try to work out where to point the camera in spider tank three to make sense of what's going on. Sure, if I had more cameras that did this time-lapse ability, I could have possibly made my job easier, but I just had to be really careful where I pointed the camera in all the episodes till the end. I'm really sorry to have the huge delay in getting this next episode up onto YouTube. I was up against multiple things working against me. I've spoken about it in previous videos on my channel, and, you know, your computer goes bust, but then you're up against a supply chain that's bust as well. Yeah, a lot of things have been busted around the world in the last couple of years. It seems to be the new trend.